Hey, Sonic Guru here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to some more frequency modulation. So previously on my last video, I had created complex sounds, more complex sounds for FM synthesis. You know, that gets that old classic 1950s sound, which is just oscillators, you know, changing the values of uh, frequency modulation, you know, the modulation amplitude, the index of a, mod uh, of a modulation, and also just adding a modulator to another modulator. So adding those complex sounds, and those are great, and I will continue working with those, but I wanted to do more with those. I wanted to, first of all, put them through an effects like a reverb, which you can see here, and then also use those complex tones and, and work with those tones with sound files, actual sound files, you know, ambient tones, you know, maybe an ethereal piano, which you will hear. Uh, so without further ado, I did get to that. So we will go to this code and talk about it and run some sounds and hopefully you find this extremely helpful. Took me about a week to troubleshoot, but I'm glad I came up with what I came up with. I will say I did come up with this code that works. Who's to say if it's accurate, but the sounds work and it's safe, so I'm sure it's fine, right? So let's go ahead and get started. So running an effects, you know, the most effective way is to run it through a, a bus and assign certain groups for a certain effect. So here I have an FM group for either my FM sounds or my sound file, and then also a reverb group, and then having the FM or having that follow the FM group. And this is a, a good standard way of assigning those groups with our in and our out arguments and all the, all the targets and destinations available to you. So go ahead and copy that as you will, if you find that helpful. And just word, I have pitch and reverb here. So my synth pitch is down here. And this is the FM synthesis code that I had last week. And also my reverb synth as you see below. Now, just, just a bit of a warning. If I just opened up my document and ran this code, evaluated this code, it would say, hey, wait, 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 where, where are the synths? Well, that's because I'm kind of being careless and placing the synths down here. Uh, so if you evaluated these first, then um, that'd be just great. Super glad we'll have no complaints there. Now I'm not gonna evaluate it now because you can see on this uh, node tree here that I do have my two groups available to me. So you can see that the basic big gray box, the default group, and then two groups inside the default group. Where we have our top one here, that's going to be the group assigned for my sound files. And then you can see, if you haven't guessed already, uh, that this bottom group is for my reverb synth. Now you can also see that the synth is running. I'm leaving it running. I have evaluated already and it's just ready to have some sound files and, and, and hear it with the reverb. Now for this demonstration, I'm just keeping the reverb fixed. I am not changing any values, you know, on, on the mix or the reverb time or what have you, um, you know, the, the low pass filter and, and all of that. Uh, so you will be hearing the same reverb. It's not gonna dynamically change. Uh, maybe it shouldn't dynamically change, but it definitely won't change between values. We are just putting it through as an effects. And let's go ahead and move along. <laughs> All right, so this was my original FM synthesis with uh, some arguments here, a frequency, a point of reference here, and then our modulator ratio value, as well as our carrier ratio value, and the index of modulation, and uh, scaling it, you know, dynamically scaling it, in this case, arbitrarily, uh, scaling it from one to five back to one, as you can see with this envelope here. So all of this, including the second modulation, this was my my last synth def in my previous video. All of this was pretty much the 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 sounding board or just the infrastructure that I needed to add and include sound file arguments, variables, and eugens. That's what I meant to say. So we will be using this as a model, but let's go ahead and uh, continue on. Uh, you do see that I, I did play with a little bit of reverb. I will say with the really 
kind of compressed uh, FM sounds. I'll just go ahead and run it. I don't hear much of the reverb. Just a little bit. It, it's got a, a, a Metroid feel, that is for sure. But let's move on to our sound files. So working with this model, minus the second modulator, I'll include that at the end. Uh, but working with this as a model, we will be exploring adding the sound file parameters. So I've got my piano, ethereal piano sound. In fact, I'll go ahead and, and bring that all the way up so you can hear what that sounds like. So it's got a, an ethereal quality to it. And all the way down here. Okay, so uh, what is the difference? Well, instead of a frequency value, we'll start with that. Instead of a frequency value, you know, a point of reference for our frequency, we're actually just going to use a sine control, an oscillator control, because our pitch is going to be whatever the original pitch and rate is of that sound file. But we are still including our ratio values, you know, the modulator ratio values, index, scale, and all of that. So what I added effectively was just the buffer argument, the rate argument, the start position, the pan, and the out, as you can see here. So we had just our carrier, I'm just going to scroll up here, we had our carrier variable and our modulator variable. We still keep those, but we are adding a signal. So this has remained the same, except instead of frequency, as you had seen before uh, in, the, in the pitch synth def and then also the previous video, I just replaced it with the, the sine oscillator control set to one for now. So here, here, here. And then I added a signal variable right here, right after the carrier variable or the carrier variable for the carrier frequency, as I named it. You can name your variables and arguments, whatever you want. Uh, but I, I like to just kind of make sure that that is specific and unique to that parameter. So we added our signal with our handy dandy play buff, Ugen, set to two, of course, and our buffer argument rate and start position. And then we included, you know, scaled it or, or um, dynamically added this to our carrier and our envelope. And then also adding a pan two, sig pan amp, you've seen this multiple times in previous videos. And then our out is going to be our signal, not our carrier as we had before, as you can see with this uh, pitch here. And that is pretty much the difference. Again, I don't know if this is the best way to include complex FM sounds to a sound file, but it does work. So, um, you know, if someone like Eli Fieldsteel has something better, uh, please, please go to his <laughs> tutorials for this. But it, so far, the sounds have been safe to play with and record. So let's go ahead and evaluate that and run it with our piano sounds. I tend to like this uh, an octave or two higher than the original. I don't like that subharmonic that you had just uh, heard. I, it's not my favorite, but it's not bad. Now these sounds are actually quite quiet uh, with, with my slow attack and, and all of that. And so I do have the amplitude at the, the maximum value, but you know, feel free to, of course, do something like, uh, like this for instance. But if I, if I apply it here, it's gonna be really, really quiet. Hardly. Just, just a little bit, so there's that. Now I do want to bring up an important point that I had discovered this week with FM synthesis and sound files. So it's great to come up with all these great colors and tones for FM synthesis, 
But if you want to distinguish oscillators in FM synthesis with regular sound files, including FM synthesis, I would suggest that you keep certain values of arguments rather low. So we'll start actually with the this control argument here. Anything exceeding two, I have noticed that it just starts to sound like FM, regardless of what the original audio file sounded like, because now we're not working with a certain pitch of reference, we're just actually working with our own perception. So things become rather indistinguishable the higher you go with the, uh, with the values here. So let's start with just a pretty low value and hopefully hear something close to a piano sound. In fact, let's keep it in, you know, between the, the first and second octave. Let me go back to the maximum value. Now, of course, you hear the modulation working inside the sound file, but it still sounds like that ethereal piano sound that I had showed you previously. Now, watch what happens when I would maybe go still with one, but something like eight. Now we're adding the reverb and it kind of, I think the reverb actually muddies it up a little bit. Uh, and, and I don't really care for that. So of course I'd have to clean the effects a little bit. Um, but that, that warbly inharmonic sound actually is a typical oscillator sound. So you're not hearing that piano anymore and that's okay. You can kind of morph it from piano to something that is just muddy FM. And I, I don't mean muddy in a bad way, um, but I would just say keep the values low if you want that original sound. Um, let's do something even more dynamic. My computer just stopped for a second. So you can actually hear it more to be the perception of what you hear with frequency modulation, not so much the piano sound. So I like to keep that value low. It was a mix of both. The second is, um, I would say the same is true for the carrier ratio value and then also the modulator ratio value. Anything, anything that exceeds four, I mean, something like eight even. Mm. Okay, that's actually not that bad. Uh, well, actually, let's just... Let's, let's go between four and eight. There we go. You hear it be a little bit more mixed with the FM oscillation and not so much the sound file. So I did want to bring that point. Um, again, this could be very much arbitrary when it talks to, when I'm, when I'm talking about values because it, it applies to the actual sound file and it just applies to general exploration. So. I would say proceed with caution. If you want the, if you want it closer to the original sound, then keep those values relatively low. All right, next we are going to work with our ambient sounds and I'll evaluate the synth depth, but let's go ahead and hear them from the top there. They're all the way to the top of my document. Let's go ahead and hear. Now these have somewhat sharper attacks, uh, you know, at the start of the sound, but I'm actually working with slow attacks here, so you won't really hear that ping. And that's all right. So those are the 20 second long sound files that I'm working with. And uh, if you may have noticed that they were outside the group because I didn't have them have a target when it came to reverb. So, so you, now you will hear them with reverb. Scroll all the way down, all the way down. Okay, here we go. So I've got my reverb bus here, had it with the piano as well, and our target is FM group. So now we should hear some nice sounds.
I do like that a lot. Let's try another ambient sound file. This is kind of a grainy, almost granulator texture to it. Granulation, I should say. And you can see I have the, the amplitude at the maximum value. So these are quite quiet, so I'd have to work with that. Um, this one is okay as far as the original sound file. I don't, it's not my favorite, but we'll just run it. It's nice, but it's got kind of like a fuzziness to it. That's nice. Now you may be hearing a, a rise and fall in pitch. Uh, that actually has nothing to do with the FM code that I have right now. Um, that, that rise and fall actually was the nature of the ambient sound that I had generated from Logic Pro. So that was the original nature of the sound getting into Super Collider. Um, I haven't worked with X lines um, or, or the line Eugen with this specific, you know, adding reverb and complex tones yet, but that might be an endeavor a little bit later. Uh, so don't be deceived, that was actually the original sound file, the, the, the harmonic, you know, shift going up and down. So just so you know, but I do like the, the third fi file just uh, a lot better. All right, and then of course, um, as we had added at the end of the previous video, uh, let's add another modulator. So instead of sine oscillator, I'll just go ahead and do LF try. It's, it has kind of the warbly effect, but I would say a more shimmery effect, especially with the second modulator here. And let's hear how that sounds. Not much different, just, just, let's just hear it. Let's change this from, yeah. Do you hear the conflict between like, it, it, it sounds stuttered and then it breaks and all that. Well, that's actually the two modulators, you know, working against each other. And that could actually be the LF try. I, I could find something a little bit more smooth. Actually, I have two try, uh, I, just, I just realized I have two, um, uh, triangle oscillators working alongside the carrier frequency, which is the sine oscillator. So, you know, again, lots of things to explore. That's pretty interesting. But again, the higher I go in values, the, the less it sounds like the original unique ambient sound file. So I would just kind of, you know, let's do something nice and long here. It is quite beautiful. So I'm, I'm very happy to have these sounds at my disposal for some future music. So anyway, I hope you like that. Thank you so much for listening to this experimentation. I hope you found it helpful, you know, running FM, complex FM sounds with, you know, running it through reverb and, and also using sound files with these extra modulator effects. So thank you always for watching and listening. Always be on the lookout for some more sound experimentation in Super Collider. Maybe a couple more FM videos, maybe with some live processing. Uh, but until I see you next, keep producing and preserving the music and keep experimenting, producing and preserving the music you love and experimenting. And uh, I will catch you later. Thanks again.